Welcome to Fight or Flight, a podcast about misophonia. I'm your host, Shane Fame Alexander, and here's my story. This is our very first episode, official episode. Now, if you heard the trailer, I gave you an overview of how misophonia has affected my life. Well, today, let's go back a bit further back to when I was just talking to you on the trailer. Let's talk about where it all started, like truly started. Back when I didn't even know what misophonia was back to a time when I thought that these triggers were just huge annoyances. This is the debut episode of Fight or Flight, where it all began. Misophonia is rather new, so there's no surprise here that I didn't realize until recently that I had it. I was speaking with my father a while back, and he asked me how long have I had these triggers. I sat down and actually thought of it. And amazed me. Different sounds always tended to bother me. My eldest sister, uh, she does something. And <laughs> she does this when she comes over. She rings her doorbell over and over. This really got to me. Or when people, like the same sister, text a few words at a time and your phone continues to give that notification beep. I hated that. I can't stand cheesy generic music especially electronic continuous phone ringing yelling all of these make my misophonia trigger list most of these date back for more than a decade like a regular pet peeve i have learned to control it except for my sister's bell ringing i can't control what i choose to hear I mute my phone, the television, I turn the radio off, switch the channel, walk away. This is why I never thought of these as such a huge deal. I can't think of any one time where I had a fight or flight experience with any of these soon to be dubbed misophonia triggers. They were there. When I heard them, I made the necessary changes and to escape the sounds. But there were there and I didn't realize it. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> okay, I lied. I do remember one instance when I was walking home from the mall. I was carrying four bags. My sister sent me text over and over and over and over again. It was a hot early summer afternoon. I was already stressed because I needed to get home, drop off the bags, and then get ready to head back out to meet friends in less than a half hour. But I couldn't ignore the continuous, boisterous beeps bombarding my brain. I kept on telling myself, that I was almost home. In fact, I was less than five minutes away from my driveway. I could see it from behind the trees. But the beeps, they kept on coming over and over and over again. I decided to drop everything I was carrying mentally and physically and find out what old sis wanted. She texted me around 10 times within a span of three minutes. I don't even remember what she was texting me about. Nothing urgent. Nothing mind-blowing, no emergency, just general weekend chit-chat. But since the repetitive text triggered me, I replied in an aggravated tone. Jesus, I'm just getting triggered right now for just thinking about it. Anyway, this happened in 2016. I thought I was just overly stressed and sweating that her text just bothered me a little bit more than usual. In reality, this was my first fight or flight moment. I can't remember any other moments like these until I started to keep track in 2019. But the signs were evident, even back in 2016. In 2016, according to Wiki, the literature on misophonia was limited. 
Some small studies show that people with misophonia generally have strong negative feelings, thoughts, and physical reactions to specific sounds, which the literature calls trigger sounds. That's all they really had. So it's not surprising that I shrugged off my triggers as everyday annoyances. Now it's time for the daily. At the end of each episode, I'll fill you in on what's happening currently when it comes to my misophonia battle. So the other day, I had a scary yet honest thought of what's been happening. Wondering when will this all end? Well, I ask myself this all the time. But for some reason, this time, I dug a bit deeper and attempted to be brutally honest with myself. My conclusion? I think I'm way too gone. I think I'm way too gone to be cured. Well, fully at least. It's become so much of my being, mentally, I don't think the triggers will ever go away. I continue to do everything in my power to alleviate everything that goes along with having this. I've been advised to try hypnosis. I'm starting to take B12s that apparently help make the triggers manageable. I hope down the road, someday, the triggers will go away. But... I'm ready for the worst. I'm ready to deal with this for the rest of my life. So that's where I am today, accepting my destiny. I'm going to own it. I'm going to grab a hold of this damn thing and make the best out of it. Join me next week when I share when misophonia was still a mystery, but it was starting to take shape. We travel back to fall 2019, two years into me living with my mother in London, Ontario. Thank you for checking out this week's episode of Fight or Flight. I shared my story with you this week. If you'd like to share your story with me, please drop me a line. You can reach me at hostshane at gmail.com or find me on Instagram at shanefamecom or famefriends. On Twitter, it's famefriendspod. And search Shower for the Soul on Facebook. Thanks again for dropping by and please leave a comment and a rating. Stay well and chat soon. This has been a Fame and Friends production.